Hello and welcome to another Microsoft Teams update. I'm Tom Wright from UC Today and as always we're joined by Microsoft MVP Tom Obafnup from a different location this time, Tom. Yeah, yeah, I'm out in uh, Finland this week, a uh, family uh, house out here. So um, yeah, it's nice to have travelled somewhere, albeit kind of COVID securely and tested and all that kind of stuff. So the kids are over to see family, which is nice. Yeah, that sounds good. And you're, you're stuck with me this month while Rob's away. Um, how's the last month or so been for you? I know we had UC Expo at the start of... Um, start of the month which is nice to to get out and about for yeah yeah so we had uh yeah comms first and then uc expo so two in-person events uh, uc expo went really really well i think like a decent turnout uh excel so thousands of people good um and kind of i had uh, two or three different sessions panels and things and uh, yeah it was all well attended and good engagement so it's nice to see people uh, out and about again which is good yeah that was my first time actually getting out with the uc today team so i'm hoping there's many more events to come um, I, saw, I saw you guys in your in your shirts, like running from stand to stand and vendor to vendor. It seemed like it was nonstop. Yeah, yeah, we really um, crammed the videos in. Um, but uh, yeah, it was nice to get out on a sort of camera on location, actually, for a change, which was good. So um, yeah, nice. we've got quite a lot of news to get through today. We've got a couple of high level bits and then some more sort of um, sort of techie platform bits. Um, I guess the big one to start with is the Magic Quadrant, the, the UCAS Magic Quadrant from Gartner. It's always one that people look out for. Uh, Microsoft, as you'd expect, right up in the in the top right corner. But can you maybe talk us through some of your takeaways from the report? Yeah, so so a lot of a lot of organisations, particularly enterprises, do take a lot of uh, their steer from what Gartner say in their Magic Quadrant, uh, and Microsoft continue to be uh, top right for both kind of UCAS worldwide UCAS and for calls and meetings, which is really good. Uh, it's quite interesting to dig below just the quadrant and look at what they're saying about the vendors because they try and assess the vendors against kind of common uh, abilities and, and, you know, features and things, but they also do a kind of strength and criticisms to decide, you know, what you should consider when you're looking at vendors. So on the strength of Microsoft, they were talking about obviously the massive growth and adoption, the 250 million active, the 80 million people using Teams for, for what Microsoft called Teams phone, but really is phone and calling combined. Uh, and they just said that it's, an obvious platform to consider for telephony if you're already using it for meetings it's in there you might as well consider it for telephony operator connect and calling plans being expanded also got a shout out so lots of positives um, on on the caution side uh, they dinged microsoft for a kind of non-unified admin experience compared to competitors which i think is fair we've got the teams admin center web ui we've got powershell and we've got graph and different features are turned on or off in different ones of those and often features released first in powershell then then into the web ui so um, i think for basic admin it's fairly simple but as soon as you get into those newer advanced features that is a fair ding um, they talked about um, some advanced features being missing from Microsoft Stack. So when you get into kind of uh, queuing advanced IVR responses, Microsoft's answer there would be, you know, user certified contact center. But obviously some of the vendors have contact center experience, you know, in their stack. So they can expand right from a basic voice user all the way through to contact center under one vendor. Whereas in Microsoft World or Zoom World, you're bringing in another party for your contact center. Uh, and then they said that um, many mid-size and large organizations have a perception that the telephony is not reliable enough. Um, although Gartner said they haven't observed this as an issue really. Um, and I think that is an interesting conversation, not just with Microsoft, but with all vendors. What is the SLA? So at Microsoft, the SLA for Teams is three nines. And telephony world, we used to talk about five nines all the time, but three nines SLA is the Office 365 SLA therefore the Teams SLA. Um, I did note in my article that Azure AD, which has been some of the Teams problems in the past, so Teams itself hasn't gone down, but login to Microsoft has gone down, therefore, to the user Teams is down. Um, Azure AD is going up, so actually, sorry, it's already gone up to four nines. So hopefully we'll see Microsoft continuing to push that in the future. I wanted to ask you about a couple of those points, actually. We'll start with um, the call quality. Gartner didn't really skirt around that, did they? They said a lot of people think the, the quality isn't quite up there. Um, is that sort of a conversation you have with customers? Do you have to sort of convince them that it's good? And do you think it's good? Yeah, it was kind of we're more talking about the the uptime as opposed to the quality itself. I think the, the, the quality, the codecs are so good now, not many people you know, have 
that experience there was a bit of battling between zoom and microsoft as to who had the best experience in kind of you know 4g and low latency but what was what was interesting was yeah the the sla and uptime i don't hear that from many of our organizations anymore which is mad because five years ago when we were doing skype for business everything was five nines you can't do five nines how do you do five nines you know you have to have resilient servers resilient switching resilient circuits it seems like in this cloud movement everybody's just accepting that like occasionally the cloud will blip whichever vendor um we have mobiles in our pocket we can get on you know with work and actually I think losing meetings is more disruptive to most organizations than losing telephony now. Like granted, there are obviously contact and scenarios and line of business scenarios where telephony going down is dire, um, as well as things like um, E911 and safety considerations and your know, frontline workers, all that kind of stuff. But for a knowledge worker, uh, I think losing your meetings for the day is more disruptive than losing your telephony in a lot of cases. And then on the customer experience side of things, this is obviously a UCAS report, but customer experience does feature kind of throughout the, the lengthy Gartner report. And, you know, it kind of really does consider how those integrations are. And from a team perspective, I think they are growing the number of customer experience companies they work with all the time. What are your kind of thoughts about how that's looking for Microsoft at the moment? Is it kind of integration is good with the likes of Five9? Yeah, so so there's eight certified conduct center vendors at the moment, and there's 12 in the process of certifying. So there, there's lots of options there. The, the integrations, by and large, are very basic at the moment. They're really throwing calls from the contact center platform to Teams and, and back again. Microsoft have a whole bunch of APIs opening up, um, which and also Azure Communication Services, which I think are really going to change the ability to tightly integrate Teams to the customer experience kind of frontline contact center type scenario um but but right now i wouldn't say the integration is is, is mind-blowing in terms of new abilities it gives the business it just means you can use a single client okay well we'll move on to the the next big piece of microsoft news now which was their quarterly results that came out last week and unfortunately we didn't get any updates to monthly active user stats but we did get some figures around um for the larger business the higher end of the market mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so their quarterly earnings, this is the earnings for FY22, so it's their first quarter Q1. Uh, yeah, and everybody in the R space looks for the the daily active users, the monthly active users numbers. Those are always the things that we're sort of interested in. Um, we didn't get anything new on those, so the latest numbers we have for context are July 2021. There was 250 million monthly active users and 80 million of what Microsoft called phone users, but really is phone and calling, so peer-to-peer calling users. So so you can probably deduce from that there's no massive headline number up from since July, um, although we've got Ignite around the corner, so we'll see if any new numbers get released at Ignite because sometimes that happens as well. Um, but we did get some numbers dropped from from Satya on the earnings call. So 138 organisations now have more than 100,000 users of Teams. That's quite significant. More than 3,000 organisations have more than 10,000 users. Um, they didn't define users this time in the in the, in the notes, but that in the past that's always meant active users so not licensed but using the tool either monthly or weekly or daily they didn't define which in this but often people will say when you release those numbers they're like yeah, yeah yeah well everybody's got microsoft so obviously they've got 138 organizations licensed for teams or 100,000 users um, obviously the license number is way higher than that like you think of all the big organizations they, they pretty much all have microsoft 365 in some shape or form licensed so this hundred thousand users i would take to mean active users of teams probably monthly um, we also got some interesting ones around integrations so there are um, ten thousand users integrating third party or line of business apps with teams which is 82 percent up on last year uh, there's also triple digit growth for frontline workers, which is something that Microsoft have been pushing really, really hard. And on the telephony front, they noted that there's a 50% increase in chats being escalated to calls. So people starting on Teams chat and escalating to a peer to peer call. They're kind of trying to show that workflow wise, people are starting to use peer to peer voice more and more, i.e., phone kind of more and more, starting in chat and escalating to voice in Teams. And I think if you take out the the surface hardware division, which is still struggling a bit with component shortages, it was growth across the board in all divisions. So it, it really is relentless for Microsoft at the moment still, isn't it? Yeah, the numbers are crazy. It was 22% uh, up 
overall um, kind of year on year, uh, quarter on equivalent quarter. Um, Azure was up about 50%. Office productivity, which is Dynamics, LinkedIn, Office was uh, up 22%. More personal computing was up 12%. Uh, and cloud revenue for the first time surpassed 20 billion for the um, which is up 36 percent year over year so they're just smashing their numbers left right and center at the moment and i think a lot of world events have played well for microsoft in terms of the technologies they use the cloud remote working productivity you know think about uh, recruitment and events and dynamics and linkedin it's all online now so a lot of technology um has has helped people during this period where we haven't been out and about as much Okay, so we'll move on to talk about um, app stores a bit now. And app stores, of course, have been in the news quite a lot recently in the consumer space. I think I'm right in saying this was something that was first announced by Microsoft a little while ago, but you've got an update now and it's designed to help make and buy apps through Teams um, a bit simpler for users. Yeah, this has been announced a few times by Microsoft as coming. So it's been a long, long wait. And it's the ability to sell, transact apps directly in Teams. So Teams has uh, an app store i don't think it's allowed to be called an app store because apple owned that patent but a place where you can grab apps um and for the longest time you've been able to get apps there but you couldn't transact through that you'd have to go out of band either with the vendor directly or through microsoft's other store which was called app source um, but now microsoft have added in transaction directly in the team so you can go in subscribe or buy the app and that money goes back to the third party app vendor so this is really good for smaller app houses you know if, if you take like a salesforce or a service now you're probably going to have a direct relationship with them anyway and then use their app in team so it doesn't matter to them so much but when you're trying to build your own line of business apps or smaller apps having both the discovery install and transaction all in one place in teams obviously makes uh, uh, the user experience a lot easier so a lot of third-party isvs and developers will be really excited about this I think I'm right in saying Microsoft has made a point of saying that the terms are sort of quite generous for the ISVs that are going to be in the App Store as well. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to keep up with what percentages apply to which of the ways you can work with Microsoft. But their general thing is that they're not they're trying to be fair to their partners in terms of the transaction rates they take. And they do really want people to transact through their stores. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're certainly pushing that they look after their partners more than maybe some other vendors. Okay, we've got a couple of sort of, uh, I guess, platform or maybe more technical behind the scenes um, updates here. Um, Azure Cloud Shell, that's coming to the Teams Admin Center. Is Can you kind yeah, of explain uh, to me? I, what, I, what, knew, I knew you'd be excited about this one, Tom. Yeah, You're a big yeah. Cloud Shell fan, aren't you? No, I am struggling. But if you can explain to me what that means, and is this something that people have been uh, sure. desperate to have for a while? Yeah, it's, it's a neat thing up of the admin experience. So we talked about Gartner dinging uh, Microsoft on the admin experience. This brings a command line interface shell, so command line directly into the browser in the Teams Admin Center. So all this is really doing is bringing together a web user experience and a command line experience into the browser, uh, which I think is really positive. I use command line a lot because um, it lets you admin at scale, you know, add a policy to 50,000 users or take something away or change something. Uh, so, so Microsoft is just making that a little bit easier for admins to jump in a browser, press a button, get the command line up, do all their stuff without having to install PowerShell and the latest module and sign in again it's all a bit more seamless uh, so not not kind of a, a massive revolution but a nice little evolution for, for teams admins to jump in and out and do a bit more admin at the command line it sounds genuinely useful as well super user particularly if you're on multiple tenants so if you deal with multiple customers um having lots and lots of powershell instances all running back to back can get a bit confusing so having it all nicely in a browser experience is quite neat Okay, cool. And then we'll um, move on to, to the next one. That's real-time telemetry in Teams. I think that's into public preview now. Yep, yeah. So this is one something that people really, really ask for a lot is they want to know what's happening during the call or during the meeting and who's having the issue. Um, I always kind of challenge that because what, what are you going to do about it mid-call? Like you're not going to change somebody's Wi-Fi mid-call. Um, but you do get these scenarios, particularly in meetings where it's a really important meeting, lots of people are presenting, and you want to understand as the organizer or admin, oh, 
Sarah's got a really bad connectivity, right? Well, let's have her talk less or Bob's struggling. Let's, you know, cut his video, for example. Um, so, so what this is, is the ability only in the Teams admin center at the moment, only for meetings to jump into a live happening meeting from a stats point of view and see things like the IP addresses, devices being used and critically packet loss, jitter latency, video bit rate, uh, frame rate, those kind of things. So something that a lot of people ask for. Um, and interestingly, it's it's gonna be for everybody until the end of the year, but then it will form part of Microsoft's advanced communications license, um, which has been a much kind of, uh, challenged license of extra cost for different advanced features um, so one of the advanced features is putting a logo in the meeting join experience for example i think this is one of the first advanced experiences where it's adding some significant value so we'll see how customers perceive that value and if it's worth paying extra per user to see these real-time stats does this step on the toes of any isvs that might have kind of built a lot of uh, functionality or add-ons for, for teams around analytics yeah, in a way. So, so there's never really been a good way to get real-time stats out of Teams full stop from an API perspective. Um, you can tap the network and look at switches and routers and try and deduce how streams are going. Um, but uh, Microsoft have done this first party for themselves in the Teams Admin Center, but there's no graph API coverage. So like, you know, modality build third party tools, there's the likes of, you know, U2 and Nectar and IR and a whole bunch of other vendors via Opta who would be desperate to have this from an API perspective and more importantly to do streaming and alerting. So this is this is designed to be, I know there's an important meeting coming up, I'll jump on and watch it, or someone has complained mid-meeting, I can go and check it. This is not tell me which meetings are going badly, tell me when Bob's meetings go badly. So there's a lot of potential to do more in real time. Um, but right now, the third party ISVs don't even have access to that data. So it does put Microsoft's tack at an advantage over what the third parties can do right now. Okay, that's interesting. And the last point is around education. I know people get quite excited about putting their certificates on LinkedIn when they've passed a Microsoft exam. And you've got a bit of an update around a voice one, I think. Yeah, this is a really big, big deal for voice uh, voice people in the Microsoft space. So for the longest time, we've had the MS700, which is the Teams exam, but that was more collaboration focused. Um, now in beta is MS720, which is called the voice engineer exam. And this is really focused on your classic UC voice people. So it's calling plan, operator connect, direct routing, policies, audio conferencing, um, device management, that type of thing. So yeah, lots of people in our space are really excited about this. Um, and I've actually been doing some work with, with Microsoft on the, the learn content. So there's some good content there. And I'm planning to do a, a video training course as well. So if people are interested in that, feel free to, to reach out to me because I'm looking for some input on kind of topics and approaches to that. But yeah, really nice to see a way for people in the Teams UC space to separate themselves out as, as certified in the field. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we could put a link to that in the in the description or get links for people to contact you, which would be good. Um, and our final point before we look at some of the events that are coming up is team devices. There's you know, a plethora of devices always coming to market, but you picked out a few highlights here, I think. Yeah, yeah, I thought we could do uh, something going like kind of rolling into 2022 as well, do a better job of calling out the device news because there's so much innovation and change in that space. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do a little devices section each month now. Um, so Microsoft Teams Room version got a bump. Um, I, I've linked to Graham Walsh's blog in, in the notes. He's done a really good job of explaining it. Uh, there's a few things that they've added there. So basic room control on the Teams mobile experience, which is what a lot of people wanted was a touchless, as in you keep touching your personal device, not the room uh, experience. Logitech Scribe content camera support, um, chat bubbles. And then this is part of Microsoft trying to bring the chat experience into the room so you don't have two meetings, one on the chat and one on the big screen, kind of from a video perspective. Uh, and also the, probably the biggest bit of news is there's a new skill added for Cortana. So you can add person by name in the, in the meeting or call by name. And there's a push to talk to Cortana button in the UI. Um, so for people that don't want voice activation, rather than saying, uh, hey, Cortana, they can press the button and then say their command. So it's, it's, that's been a while coming as well. But that, that Cortana speech experience now getting integrated into the room experience. 
Okay, and I think there's a couple more bits of device news coming out. Yeah, yeah, a few other bits. Uh, so Crestron um, have built a relationship with Huddley, who have some kind of fairly advanced cameras, and they'll be bundling the new Huddley L1 camera into their stack. And this is quite interesting in the devices space. You're seeing different vendors working together, partnering and, and collaborating where it makes sense for them, particularly between kind of classic audio and video vendors. Um, also on the devices front, Jabra released their new Evolve 275, uh, which is a kind of nice noise cancelling headset. The, the USP there is it has a boom, uh, so it can fold down and have a nice boom, and it hits that Microsoft Open Office certification, which is the certification for blocking out noise around you um, but it also slides the boot back up into the headset so when people are on the train or the tube they don't feel weird having a massive uh, boom arm and they're just listening to their music which is it's a funny consideration but it's a real world one we hear a lot is people don't want to be on the train or the tube with a boom even folded up they feel like it's weird so it's kind of like that slick consumer look but with the, the performance of a boom when you need it have you managed to get your hands on any of these yet? I know um, you're often on LinkedIn, kind of with a, a new headset you're testing. Yeah, yeah, I do go through quite a lot of different ones. Yeah, so that that one is in the post from uh, Jabra, so I'll, I'll be definitely be testing it out. Um, I do I do like a headset with a boom. There's just such a better quality experience. Like if it can nail having a boom and still looking good for people on the train listening to their music, I think it'll be a contender. But their old Evolve 75 was one of my go-tos for quite a while. So um, yeah, I've got high hopes for that one. I think there's an EPOS headset then, as well that you picked out. Yeah, yeah, EPOS. Um, so the, the news there is EPOS have integrated with Audio Codes OVOC. So a lot of the news this month is vendors working with vendors. So OVOC is Audio Codes uh, management suite. Um, and it's interesting to see that EPOS will be in there for um, remote updates of firmware, configuration, adoption stats, things like that. And this is one of the areas for, for customers where integration really adds value to them because they don't want a different admin experience for their their phones and their headsets and their all the different headset vendors and stuff so it's interesting to see vendors working together like epos and audio code just to slick in that experience cool well, i think uh, device is going to be a nice addition to the monthly update so um yeah we look forward to doing that ongoing and um we're going to finish by talking about events we started by talking about events so it's a nice Nice place to wrap things up. Um, should we start with Call and Contact Centre Expo coming to everyone's favourite London uh, events hall, the XL? Yeah, definitely. So so this is another. So after the UC Expo um, last month, we now get Call and Contact Centre Expo, um, two day events, 16th, 17th of November, uh, more focused on kind of contact center and voice as the name suggests uh, and i'm just trying to line up with them i think i'll be doing a session there around your your microsoft teams contact center option so i'm really looking forward to that and of course just around the corner is microsoft ignite a virtual event um i think i'm right in saying you're involved with that as always what can we expect to see from that yeah, yeah, really looking forward to that. That's the kind of uh, business or customer facing show. So Inspire is the partner show and in Ignite is the customer show. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, news across the M365 stack. I've called out five sessions in my blog that are around Microsoft Teams that are worth seeing. That The highlight from a new features perspective is probably there's going to be a dedicated session around Teams Connect shared channels. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's Microsoft's new way for different organizations to collaborate in the same channel without tenant switching so looking forward to that uh, there's also some devices news there's some security news so um, yeah it's worth getting registered for ignite it's, it's the whole microsoft technology stack but if you're just interested in teams and you see uh, there, there's four or five sessions that are worth dripping into for um, some good content Okay, well, yeah, we're certainly going to be keeping a close eye on what comes out there. But um, Tom, I'm sure we'll be speaking to you about that too. But enjoy the rest of the time in Finland. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to everybody for the uh, potato quality in, in laptop webcam this month. We'll be back to full full uh, AV studio next month. But yeah, hopefully it's been useful. And yeah, if anybody's got any questions or anything we've missed or comments, feel free to, to post them in the comments and we'll reply. Cool. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll be back soon with uh, another Teams update looking at all the news coming out of Ignite. So please keep an eye out for that. And we'll see you next time. Bye.